I'm very happy to introduce to our conversation Stilmer Ern Gruthmanson, storyteller, performer, dancer, object maker, illustrator. Stilmer, as a self-dubbed maximalist artist, your work takes many forms as it incorporates a plethora of mediums and media, from pen and ink drawings and paintings to sculptural murals or digitized and filmic works and performative acts. Your work often seems to shape-shift in its setting and jives with its audience, whether live or real-time, and DJed into a durational exhibition. Audiences have encountered your work, and often you yourself, in a great number of settings, from within museums, project spaces, festivals, to domestic sites. And I have the pleasure to, of knowing you, Stiermir, for a long time based on a, a common connection with a fellow Icelandic artist, Rith Fittuson. And it's, I think it's a nice segue into this conversation because today we'll be speaking about the development of your artistic practice. And you worked for, for many years with Rith in his studio in Amsterdam as his assistant. And I should also mention as a source of inspiration, you featured in many of his works. And I wanted to kind of um, bring back to a part of the conversation that you had said you were inspired by the way that Rith allows his work to also die and come back and, and not necessarily s sitting strictly with kind of the production um, uh, titling and, and kind of market driven demands of art production. And my question to you to begin our conversation would be, about what are your rhythms and approaches that lend to your art making? Are there many threads in your practice that seem to reemerge? Thank you, Cassandra. Um, my rhythm is a waveform. So if you imagine an axis of this waveform, there are fields of introvert and extrovert uh, aspects. And the drive of my work is sometimes a manic energy and sometimes a very lazy and sluggish energy. And so that's how I work. Uh, sometimes I'm extremely introverted and then I might sit down uh, in total isolation and draw like a monk or a prisoner. Uh, I will draw so society or or politics even, even contemporary events like the pandemic. Or uh, I might blow up in size and draw large, rather um, not figurative, but spiritual mm. imagery, mm. which uh, the viewer is invited to be uh, a protagonist in. So the viewer stands in front of these large drawings that are are um, very time consuming uh, to make and these are um, in this space uh, for me uh, consciousness becomes a kind of a simulation mm -hmm. so I and the viewer the protagonist rely on our instincts mm -hmm. of looking and touching and playing um, there are many things that I like to do. Um, uh, I do performances and that's probably where I am on the extrovert zone mm -hmm. of my practice. That's when I want to go out and see people and give people life work. And um, there's even another um, delightful way of working uh, which is to depict nature and landscape and I do that with fantasy mm -hmm. uh, I don't uh, I don't like to draw so much nature as I see it but rather as I fantasize about it so my landscapes are otherworldly kind of trippy but they are f they are rooted in my fascination with geology and mm -hmm. uh, astronomy and Icelandic art history. Mm. 
bringing in a lot of different components within your work. Um, this kind of brings me back to this particular context of the talk as a space to reflect on your experiences as an artist in resident here in Berlin. And I really mean that in the, the most broadest terms of what it means to be in residence. Um, Berlin itself as full of circles of artists. And um, you're now again in a studio setting with many other interim artists in residence. And I, I'm curious to know whether this intermingling of artist practices is generative to your work. Yeah, the intermingling fuel, I would like to call mm -hmm. it, is so important. And I, I came to KB with the premise of turbocharging myself mm. with this intermingling uh, fuel. And so I started meeting people and making friendships and such empathic people, compassionate, competitive people really good friendships that um, that were born and will need a reunion later on because something terrible happened. Coronavirus came and ran over the world by storm and total isolation was the thing to do, the, the, the way to be. And so, you know, the intermingling fuel had to wait, so I just went into uh, isolation and, you know, got manic and got depressed and so on, like all of us. And, but then, in the darkness of egoistic boredom, came the light, because Agatha, mm. my partner, and art collaborator as well, became pregnant. And so Lilia, the Berliner, was born. Oh my God, she's amazing. Yeah, so a whole new intermingling inspiration came mm. to me mm. out of the darkness. And uh, I would like to share with you a work which I made before Lilia was born. Uh, because when I saw Lilia for the first time by ultrasound, I got interested in zodiac signs mm -hmm. or astrology because I wondered what her story will be and astrology is really the oldest religion of humans and it's all about storytelling and sort of uh, figuring each other out in creative ways so I made a, a, a work in uh, which stands permanently in the harbor of Reykjavik uh, and it's called Stjörnu Liljur, or Astro Lilies. And uh, this work is a um, uh, bouldering relief, uh, which uh, viewers are invited to, to climb. Mm. And uh, so it goes in line with works of mine that are about touching, uh, about the human body sort of mingling with the work. So so Stjörnu Liljur is a is a big mural that I always that I that yeah I, I always wanted to see the human body travel in a mm. big painting and mm. so um, so Astro Lilies is, is is a playground in the name of my daughter. Amazing! I I love also that that vision of entering climbing into into a landscape of. A, a mural, a work, and the the film that you have of that piece where you introduce also the zodiac signs is fantastic. And that um, actually brings me to another filmic performative work of yours where you enter into a landscape which has been featured in many um, paintings um, over time. And it is your work Dumont saint Victoire avec Amour and in this work, I was quite interested to find out that the, the voiceover was kind of a second, secondary thought. And um, you, within, within the film, you actually repeat Cezanne, and then you repeat yourself repeating Cezanne. And again, in the script itself, you know, there are these parallel moments, the film and the audio are each one take sequences, and there's a very strong spiraling effect and I wanted to, to ask you specifically about the correspondence 
that you make with art history and in the making of new work? Yeah, as an artist, uh, I can correspond with other artists, whether they are living or dead, um, by making work that is in reference to theirs. And so this work, um, Du Mont Saint Victoire avec Amour, was made while I was on a directive for Fred Fridfinson, who you mentioned. Uh, Freyton asked me to go down to Mont Saint Victoire and uh, reproduce a work of his called From Mont Saint Victoire. And so I went there and I made uh, rubbings of the mountain for him. But I couldn't resist but to correspond myself with Paul Sasan by painting the mountain that he painted 90 times over. And not only that, I wanted to create a kind of a sorcery in this correspondence by injecting another correspondence with another departed artist, Bob Ross, mm -hmm. a great painter. Uh, so I created a kind of a Bob Ross type video of me painting uh, the famous mountain, Mont Saint Victoire. Because Cezanne, he is like just pushing away criticism and letting in just the salvation of, of just creating out of joy. And that's really what I am about, you know. Yes, absolutely. To, to bring back some of those quotes um, that I pulled from your film. Right now a moment of time is passing by. We must become that moment. The contour eludes me, you read. And then you also add, the landscape thinks itself in me and I am its consciousness. Absolutely. And he sure also said, all hail the sun for all the brilliant colors it brings. And being on Mont Saint Victoire in the scorching sun in August is no joke. And you know, you have to wear the classic clothes of, mm. you know, the, the kind of a uh, straw hat and all of, you know, the, the kind of white clothes, you know, it's, mm. it's not a cliche, it's just practical. It's very hot there. I think you also tapping into that kind of the, the flow of that um, process being one with something and the, both of those you said the the film itself and the recording were one take um, aspects and I know that in previous performance works you've been really painstakingly scripted uh, and I'd like to ask you from which perspective because your live performances you're often really at eye level with your audience even in the audience and yeah so from whose perspective do you envision the work I, I guess it was kind of like working like a stand-up comedian, but for me, um, even though I do sort of automatically use a lot of humor in my work, but it's not about being funny, it's more about uh, creating uh, or provoking thoughts. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really, I really enjoyed this uh, way of working, this kind of stand-up storytelling art. Mm. and. Uh, so being, you know, on this eye to eye level is interesting and it's um, um, it's something uh, different than uh, performing arts are used to where there is usually a, a wall between uh, mm -hmm. the performer and the and the viewers. Um, so I would, you know, uh, also use kind of a slap happiness uh, as a as an ingredient to cook with mm -hmm. and um, that's of course where humor comes in and and uh, yeah so I started with stories and and uh, slowly I started to dare to go from stories to poems and and uh, the, and then I dared to make actual lyrics for uh, and sing those lyrics and then finally the mm. the highest form of storytelling for me is uh, rap music and so I created uh, this uh, album you are flipping through. This is a uh, LP, vinyl LP uh, of my rap album. It's, a, it's an avant-garde rap album called What Am I Doing With My Life? 
and inside of it is tons of arts, yeah, illustrations of each track. I love, I love this format to that also to imagine the the LP um, in relationship to the drawings as well. Mm -hmm. and I know that was a, a collaboration. Um, that that kind of brings me to the question of how you were focusing previously on these very fine-tuned scripted details of your performance making to now you're moving more towards the larger framework, incorporating the ingredients, uh, free form, and, and also getting yourself into maybe a deliberate, what you've called zone or trance state. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think of, of Jonah Friedman's non-plan, this very deliberative practice of allowing for and opening up and I wonder if you can maybe maybe think to this or speak to this um, this idea of encountering the the audience and and making something distinct with an art audience. Yeah, um, it is nice to for me to be able to start um, being less scripted in a way. It's even it's even practical, uh, less time consuming, and but it's very magical and there's a lot of magic mm. that comes when um, being under the influence of adrenaline in front of a gazing uh, crowd and contemporary art crowd is definitely the toughest crowd there is but also art performance as a medium is probably the most demanding and toughest thing to look at mm. so I like to really uh, try to invest in in relaxation and calmness before uh, delivering a performance. And I can do that by eating healthy, going to the toilet several times, um, having healing sessions. I've had healing sessions by other artists mm -hmm. that really healed me before a, a show. Or to meditate and then you go into this trance and you can really maneuver and make super creative choices when you are, you know, under control of your whole own body. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and so it's important for me because, uh, like I said, performance art is so demanding for the viewers because they never know what they're going to get, mm -hmm. opposed to a theater or music. So. I, I like to invest in that, you know, invest mm -hmm. in uh, calmness and, and uh, then, uh, then I'm able to jump off the cliff. I love it. It's, it's um, incorporating really a sense of knowing, not knowing. And there's this, this beautiful suspension of, of belief. And um, I'm just going to throw it out there, but to quote the last lines of 13th century Anatolian uh, poet Rumi um, from Story Water. Water, stories, the body, all the things we do are mediums that hide and show what's hidden. Study them and enjoy this being washed with a secret we sometimes know and then not. And I only dare to make the connection with the spinning dervish, knowing, knowing that you have a background in breakdancing. In fact, I've seen you spinning on your head inside many artworks. And I just wanted to ask you whether, is there a way that we can see the dizzy space as a clear-headed space, as a generative space? I am a spinning man, and um, I'm spinning on this best beautiful planet earth that is spinning around a beautiful star that is spinning around a galaxy that spins around a black hole that probably spins around something that we don't understand yet so spinning is fundamental from spinning i started to um, make kinetic artworks mm -hmm. um, gyroscopic sculptures that uh, are meant for the visitor to touch and to to turn and spin themselves. So they are kind of like breakdancing objects. And uh, from there on, I would go on to make more uh, art to be fiddled with. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I believe, you know, especially again, uh, having this blissful experience of, 
of holding my uh, child, uh, I, it's it's just so evident how skin is is really the the biggest sensor of mm. all. And yet, art has always been, uh, you know, with this tradition of we kindly ask you not to touch mm -hmm. the art. But I believe we can break that tradition and start fiddling with art. Um, what, do you, what do you think are the, the parameters or the conditions which most support your work? My parameters are very much about uh, learning new skills, uh, like uh, learning how to play the piano mm -hmm. a after I turned 30 or whatever, you know, uh, or, or even uh, uh, building my own instruments or, or well, making a rap album also mm -hmm. uh, in recent years and, and just, you know, pushing myself off the cliff in a way that is <laughs> constructive and, um, uh, yeah, to try to always come up with, with something new. But on the other hand, when you get older, it just gets harder to just be always trying to mm -hmm. work in a new way. And also now that I am a proud parent, it's also... Uh, you know, it's Im immediately I see, you know, I cannot be so loose uh, with everything I do, you know. And But on the other hand, mm. my baby is really uh, kind of making my mind into a diamond, you know, and making me really think more straight and uh, inspiring, really. And uh, so I feel like the older you get, you know, uh, and especially if you are stubborn, you have to be very stubborn to continue mm -hmm. doing art. So you have to be stubborn and you have to go on. And if you go on for many decades, you master your craft. And that is the truest beauty of all. I love this, Dude, This is so inspiring. I think everyone should be looking for that um, experience. Also to to have the, the diamond thinking within, within our own works. Um, and our own, uh, what we do, what we practice. It's been really a pleasure to get to know your practice even more thoroughly. And I recommend that our audience also visit Stiedmir's website to look into all of the, the nooks and crannies there. And I would really love to look into these crates here. Yeah, I would love to share with you uh, what's in these boxes. So, without too many words, because I told you I'm uh, kind of trying to do something new by abandoning language for a bit. I, uh, I present to you my keramic instruments, which uh, I'm going to play for you on a little bit. These instruments are uh, representing the uh, organs of the human body. Here you have the uh, stomach, and here we have a liver, and here we have one of the most important organs, the lungs. And so I will, uh, with pleasure, play a short performance. Wonderful.